So this is why I really, really encourage women like you uh, who show up, who, who feel called. This is like you, you're putting a mark. You're courageous. You're leading the way. You, you transformation a whole culture. Can you imagine how big it is? It's like I get chills. This is so courageous. It was the same with this last woman from Egypt. She did such a massive work. And we were like, wow, imagine the impact it has on the field. Somebody yeah. has to break the pattern. Yeah. Somebody has to do that and take that on. So I just encourage, 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 encourage. It's the, one of the most important works that we can do. Yeah. All right. So it's 10 past already. Yeah, let's so start. Let's, let's start. start. There are probably more people coming. So hi and welcome, everybody. My name is Matt. You see that here. I have to my right, Sana, and to my left, Deanne. They are both the founder of the De Armoring Art School. I'm guest teaching. I'm the consent geek of the trio. And uh, I would like to give it to ladies first, Sana, uh, a few words about um, who are you? Who am I? um hello everyone some of you i've met and some of you i have not yet met uh, my name is susanna <laughs> but matt knows me very well as my previous name sana so susanna and uh, yes i'm the founder of uh, the armoring arts together with co-founder together with dian uh, and uh, i would say in short that i am a uh, a geek in human potential, in personal development, uh, spirituality, everything that makes me become more alive and happy and integrated and live a masterful and skillful life. And I've been on the path for about 25 years now, or 27 actually. Uh, I started young and I'm really passionate about um, contributing to um, positive global impact. Yeah, so I'm really, really dedicated to working and contributing. This is what I've dedicated my life to. I'm very grateful to be here. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Sana. Mm. Give it over to you, Dian. Dian. Who are you? I'm Dian. Um, I've also been uh, on this path, actually, a very, very long time, decades. Feels like forever. Um, I Actually, I've been on a path mostly for... <laughs> mostly for my personal reasons and for the last I don't know how many maybe 16 years I actually taught people various arts and then what I found is that as the teaching was happening as I was developing my work was developing as well so the armoring arts was like the latest uh, nine years ago was the latest baby that uh, Sana and I came up with mm -hmm. and uh, I don't really know what else to say but uh, I'm really happy to be here I'm really happy to see so many people and uh, super happy to share the topic that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. So, yeah, over to you, Matt. Yeah, what will be sex and empowerment? Yeah, so hi, everybody. My name is Matt. Um, I'm German-born. Um, I've been nomadic for 15 years. And uh, my path of kind of sexual self-development began when I was 27. That's... Uh, uh, 27 years ago <laughs> i'm uh, 55 uh this is um uh, my guest gig where i'm as a guest teacher in the dearmoring art school so i've uh, been teaching six trainings with dn and sana together i've done before a similar training uh shorter term i don't know probably 16 17 times or so uh, I'm the consent geek in that trio, so I create the container and the communication pieces. Uh, um, I take care of it. Can, thank you. Uh, yeah, done. Th that when people start touching each other, that they have literally the uh, consent frame in place. I just teach um, empowerment and uh what receiving is so that people literally have a better understanding on their um, neurological level when they engage before we come to sexual touch at the training. And I'm very passionate about that. So um, that's me. Um, so as I said that, this is the sixth training that I'm teaching with uh, Sana and Dn. But how many de armoring trainings have you two done before? How many trainings have you been? 18. 
No, I actually I counted it the other yeah? day. This is going to be the 17th in October. Oh, Excuse okay. We lost the one or two. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's like oh. almost having a 17 year old child, you know? It's, totally. The child it's is living the nest home, soon. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> So let's uh, dive in just like a few words and uh, um, about what is the armoring literally for us. And you can't find any more controversial uh, answers than the three of us. And that's the, the, the kind of big part in the training um, because we're not coming from a book. We're coming from uh, lived experiences and embodied uh uh, trainings that we have done and uh, when people um, ask us certain questions in the training we most of the time have different answers and that the variety makes it so uh, diverse so um, Sana what's the armoring for you and what is the benefit of the armoring in your life specifically on a sexual level because that's the theme for today yeah exactly um so in short, what the armoring is for me, it's really a lifestyle. It has developed to a lifestyle for me. So the armoring is basically to free myself as much as possible, to look at all my belittling as much as I can, <laughs> as many as I see, <laughs> belittling thought patterns. Where do I hold back? Uh, uh, where I'm afraid? Where can I grow? So that is more like on a mental behavior level. So that is the armoring for me, like how to, can I repattern myself constantly? Yeah, like I'm an alive being. And for me, it's much about life mastery. So how much can I master my life and be aware, conscious, choose my actions, thoughts, reactions? Uh, how free can I be, basically? <laughs> so I could go much deeper into it, but I'm also aware that we have a topic to cover. But what really changed, what was really, really life changing for me was I did a lot of work before I done uh, before I found the arm ring so I did yeah plenty of things for many years and when I came across the arm ring and started to work with my uh, sexual wounding I had done like psychotherapy psychotherapy before I have sexual abuse in the background a lot of abuse in my background I've worked through that so it's all fine I'm just sharing for my story uh, so when I came across the arm ring and, and got these first sessions, sexual healing sessions, it was mind-blowing and it really changed my life. And it changed my life because the man who was giving me a session, he was putting my, he was bringing my body into pleasure and without taking advantage out of me. And for me, who come from a then abusive background, I never had a man caring for me in that way. I never, I could never feel myself in that way and it just opened a whole new world for me and I got so passionate about it so I started to discover other fields and uh, then I come across another another uh, session giver and I when I had my then he offered my cervix and I literally had a religious experience and this is kind of where my where my mission to pass this method on was born because it was so profound and I realized really that if we don't work directly with our sexuality from the root, from the core, we cannot really transform that part, yeah? Because it's so distorted. And so after that session, I, 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 well, during the session, I felt pain, like generational pain, just moving through my body from, you know, generations of women, the abuse. <laughs> and I remember tears just streaming from my face and I sat in prayer and just, felt this profound impact and that's when I made this this uh, choice to to learn this and study this and then pass it on to as many people as I could so for me this is doesn't matter how much work I do I will always come back to the armoring and I will you know the 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 way we can explore our sexual potential our orgasmic potential is is, is heavenly <laughs> so the armoring you know the first step of the armoring of actual physical the armoring is to release those blockages those yeah so we can increase life force energy so we can start to feel ourselves more we can become more alive and then from that we can start to work with really with our orgasmic potential and this is where it's just mwah, so delicious mm. <laughs> yeah Oh, thank, oh, you, thank you. I get all passionate here. My pocket, like, I could go deeper. 
<laughs> thank you so, so I much. love it yeah mm. thank you and you know uh, to everybody there can't be more diversity uh, in the uh, a trio of us and uh, uh, Deanne what's your sexual empowerment mm. path of the armoring and <laughs> related <laughs> to the theme <laughs> yeah so basically like my definition of the armoring keeps changing as years go by and the latest one, uh, as well as Anna, also the armoring became a lifestyle some time ago. And the definition of it really is anything that stands between me right now, the Matuka, and my full mastery is armor. So the armoring for me, it really is path of mastery. And it's a very long path. I'm dedicated to it fully. And out of that dedication, when I connected to sexual empowerment, or, or then I also had different waves and different rides uh, through my journey. So my initial uh, connection to sexual empowerment through the armoring was uh, genital, the armoring, quite a lot of it. Uh, I received many, I gave many, that was kind of part of my life and it opened me up to many, many new things. So that was amazing. And then uh, about eight years ago, I also found out that I am leaking sexual energy all over the place and, and emotional energy and relational energy. My second center was not really able to verticalize the energy up and down but was kind of spewing it left and right and center and creating this uh, romantic and relational and sexual connections with many many people that were not healthy for me so i then took on a path of the armoring through celibacy so now i've been almost eight years fully celibate and uh, this is like hardcore the armoring so you see when we talk about the armoring as a lifestyle the armoring is not a technique. It's not like you go and press A, B, C, and then you're the armor. Ta-da, no, no. The armoring can take many oh. different forms. And uh, in this particular form that I'm taking uh, on myself is through celibacy. Because that's the form that I needed to be taken to deal with that particular issue within my system that I wanted to de-armor. So we can go much, much deeper into it if you wish. But uh, I think that's the definition and my connection to the sexual empowerment with it for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much about myself so um i think that the highest uh dynamic of the armoring is literally using life force energy is using sexual energy for and pleasure for individual transformation and i think that our all capacity mm. of our sexual potential has the um potential to bring us into this uh, field of unified consciousness i've personally experienced that many many times and i i personally think that uh, a fully liberated sexual being is an is an um, empowered being mm. and i haven't found any deeper layers of de-armoring than sexual pleasure in myself so where do I carry my own blockages that doesn't allow me to feel more so all my kind of shame guilt and fear trips that I have conditioned and be put in my body and there's nothing more than the armoring than a good relationship <laughs> on all levels <laughs> so and relationships not only uh, to my beloved one and my partner as well relationship to all people in life so I like this kind of uh, thinking if you are uh, thinking you are enlightened to uh, spend two or three weeks with your parents together and yeah. because this is where all your conditionings are from on sensual sexual and you know all levels um i'm i've i've, I've written a book that calls orgasmic blueprint and um my path of uh, sexual liberation um has been going into uh, something that I call um, edging, yeah. Also that's, that means kind of being capable uh, of taking the goal of climax out of the equation and using sensuality and sexuality for myself and with other people to reach and you know the highest state of awareness. And uh, then I just uh, have learned a lot about the nervous system and the nervous system function and how we communicate and how that psychologically and emotionally is uh, wired. And this is um, what I literally bring uh, into the de-armoring field. I have been a practitioner for many, many years. I had um, 
my two fingers and many, many people um, of, of all gender identification. And I love that work dearly and uh, the level of integrity and uh, impeccability in relationship to clients has been part of my passion, what is as well part of my book. So, and I'm here today um, sharing that with you as much as I can in this short period of time. Mm. Anything you, Deanne or Sana, want to add? Or uh... Yeah, I was thinking that actually one thought that arose when, when you were speaking, and there is this, the, the, the level of the armoring that can be required when we want to, explore our orgasmic potential. I mean, there are so many layers of repression and in people that some people, they, they don't know the capacity, they don't know the potential, uh, they don't feel they deserve it, they are scared of it, you know, when this energy starts to run. And that is, you know, often we think that the armoring or the path of transformation just has to be painful or we have to scream and bang pillows or be angry and, and you know, but maybe the armoring is also to be fully alive. Like maybe the armoring is to live our true to our gifts. Maybe the armoring is to shine bright in the world, you know? But often what I see in this personal development field, and I was stuck for many years until I woke up from that, this like constant hunger to dig into the shit, which will always come, you know, we live. But what I love with the sexual empowerment is the 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 that first we need to go into the dirt and the dark, of course, but then to really allow to become sexually potent and full and alive and juicy. And that is, I think, can be um, scary for many. And not even knowing the potential. So like, what do you even mean? Like, what do we even mean when we say that? I know some of you will be able to relate to that and maybe some of you not like what does that mean even to you know explore our orgasmic potential you know because it's much bigger than a clitoris orgasm <laughs> <laughs> or a peak orgasm it's like it's like becoming orgasmic yeah so yeah. i want you to talk into that yeah anything you want to add in i just want to open broaden it a little bit because let's kind of look at this sexual empowerment what really is it like on what levels can we talk about it so let's then on a physical level sexual empowerment, as well as both of you already said, would be almost like getting arousable, like getting more sensitive within your physical body. Mm -hmm. Like for me, for example, when I had my first cock armoring, it was revolutionary difference between before and after to the actual sensitivity of the organ, sensitivity of the skin, sensitivity mm -hmm. of the nervous system, receptivity of it, like multifold increased. So then we can say that like sexual the, uh, empowerment on a physical level is also awakening the tools, if you like, awakening the body itself. Mm -hmm. And we can look at it maybe on an a emotional level, sexual empowerment would be dealing with all the se uh, like sexually related uh, trauma potentially or experiences that we had from our teenage years, all the kind of belittling, all the, uh, uh, yeah, basically all the emotional baggage that we carry to do with sexual life, which is again, like the whole, the bug is big, you know, <laughs> we carry a lot. And then we can look at it mentally, like, like Sana already was kind of talking about the limiting belief systems and do's and don'ts and like you dirty girl and like, you know, what we were taught to think about on a mental level about the whole topic of sexuality. So that's uh, another massive thing that, that, that can be hugely empowered through the armoring. Mm. So then we have those three, um, and then interwoven into that, there's going to be like for me, potentially like the celibacy also for me is hugely sexually empowering because it's actually creating a man out of a boy. Now, that's a big thing In, when we talk also about it's more than just sexual empowerment, mm. it's also sexual empowerment. Mm. So we, when you start looking at the armoring on like a multi multidimensional multidimensionality, Mm -hmm. sexual uh, empowerment can actually happen on many different levels and it's needed yeah. on all those levels yeah. to create a one big hole yeah. i just want to say like short before you also say uh, math there so for me as a woman who has a lot of abuse in my background or had a lot of abuse in my background to learn just to ask for what i want or how i wanted to be touched and and um explore I mean I have many stories and I tell them in the training but 
how I then went from being like super shy and, and afraid of being rejected to just like explore this sexual hunger with men that I've chosen, you know, like to become sexually empowered and go for what I wanted instead of, you know, being chosen and maybe being in, in transaction or pleasing in bed. Yeah. So we just look at that level. That's, that's, that, that is something that I think the whole fucking globe would benefit of because we, 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 we mature, you know, we mature in that relating, in that meeting, and that will also spread in everything else that we do. Mm. Mm. So we hear a little bit more about, or you will hear a little bit more about uh, the three of us, and then um, uh, we will opening on one point uh, for more questions and answers, and then we probably hear for one of the people who have been in the training, uh, um, if they I... want to share a little bit. Yes, please. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish that, that line of thought, please. <laughs> and what I would like to say about this uh, uh, armoring dynamic, specifically in the training, you know, in the in the training that we do, uh, we do sexual de armorings. That means people stick their finger in other people's bodies, Can't and be. and that can be very scary. And when when there is um, sexual de armoring happening from from a place of uh, unconsciousness, it can cause more armor than actually liberation, than freedom. And uh, this is very, very important because we all carry a story in ourselves. So that when we have the right agreement field, that people can literally choose from an empowered place what is happening to them, not expressing only boundaries, what is not happening, but saying what is happening, what they want, it can become uh, an orchestra of enlightenment in this in, in, in the uh, uh, training. What I have experienced when people are consciously engaging, creating agreement field about how they want to be touched, when this is embodied from the individual, that they can then take that in their life and translate that into their own sexual experience that they can be then touched from everybody else, including their relationship partner or anybody else, the way how they want to be touched in their uh, sexual area. Um, it's just phenomenal. This in itself just like kind of lightens me up and makes my heart beat. So this is, mm -hmm. this is fantastic. Before I give that to the people who have been in the training, because I'm really curious what I, your I wanna, experience was. Yeah, I, I would just want to add one thing. And, and so ask I also want to... Dan first, because he was zipping his mouse and then oh, okay. Sana. Okay. Sorry, well, I that, like that. The I'm thing really... is, I just wanted to actually read the Frida's question and answer it. So whether do we go for it now or whether we go, go for it? And we wait a little bit. I just want we to... We wait a little bit. So, so when, when I people wanna... can... One I second, Sana. I just yeah. want to say that when 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 people sh uh, share who have been in the training, then we invite you to write your questions in the chat, and then we either go from the question or you can unmute yourself and ask. So yeah. whatever you like. Great. Please, Sana. Sorry. And and for I the people it. that will share, just make it not too long. Yeah, I say that. Yeah. So with the, with the sexual healing, and we, we talked a lot about moving in with fingers, yes, but also just the the power of being touched actually without arousal needing to happen. So many of us are used to when our genitals are being touched, that it's time to be aroused or sex is supposed to happen and so on. But the healing is such a profound healing itself to just be held in love and care. And it's what I see also with many men who has, you know, many men go often go into performance. I don't know if you can relate to that. But when it comes to sexuality, when your genitals are being touched, but to, as a man to just be touched without having to perform anything, without needing to get hard, there's nothing expected out, out of you. That is that is uh, that is uh, mind blowing. It's it's such a healing. Yeah? And I've seen it so many times. So this is also why it's. What I, what I, why I think it's important to separate, you know, we have the healing part of it and then we have the pleasure part, yeah? So we get to experience both levels because sometimes if we go into the pleasure part, we override what is actually true underneath, yeah? Mm. Okay, so I think um, it's the time now for a little exercise. Okay, yes. And 
Um, and then we'll just go into some sharing. And I would like to uh, talk a few sentences about why I love this exercise so much. So when I went into sexual de-armoring work uh, or into sexual um, uh, empowerment, I learned the in the very beginning the Mantak Chia technique in Tao Yoga. And that was that to learn to control your sexual energy um, is to learn to squeeze your muscles on the sympathetic dynamic. So just like tightening up and um, squeezing your pelvic floor. And um, many women have learned uh, through yoni egg uh, practice or squeezing their uh, uh, vagina muscles through uh, massaging the man's penis uh, and uh, so so we all have learned to a certain degree to tense up and hold our genitals tight that we feel more yeah or that we feel more when we release and I've done that as well and I've learned from the masters to let that go and these are women women who have given birth and women who have been working as midwives. And I have learned to translate that as well into the male's body in my own experience. So what I would like to invite you to in an exercise um, is um, tuning into your pelvic floor just for a moment and just take a deep breath and inhale as if you inhale through your pelvic floor. So when you inhale, you will literally expand your pelvic floor as if you're having a little bowl. And when you exhale, you just relax and let go. You inhale and expand. Exhale and let go. And let's do that for a few more times. You inhale and expand. As if you're pushing it out through your genitals and you Exhale and relax. And just notice what you notice in your body while you do that. And some of you might have a tingling, some of you might have a buzzing or a vibrating, or you sense more, or you have a little bit of a turn on, or you might feel numb. And whatever there is in your pelvic area is absolutely perfect. So there's nothing that needs to be changed or wrong or repaired or fixed. And if you have your eyes closed, I invite you slowly to opening up your eyes with a sensation as they are. And bring your attention back to the screen. And now I would like to invite you to a different exercise. And this is what the armoring has in storage in this dynamic. So we all have learned from early age on that to hold our pee and our poo and our air back, um, that we just need to learn to clench and squeeze our pelvic floor muscles. And I would like to invite you not to squeeze your pelvic floor muscle, but squeeze your fist. So really make a hard fist as strong as you possibly can and take all this energy in your fist just for a few seconds, 10 seconds or so. Really squeeze it hard. And without taking... Uh, without opening your fist, just take the energy out of your fist and leave your fist as it is. Stop squeezing and just hold it. Relax. Just yeah, without squeezing, just hold your fist as it is. And this is this is how we all carry our pelvic muscles and our muscle tissue through our life. So we have learned to squeeze and control, and most of us don't know even that we're doing that. So it's a, it's a sympathetic, muscular um, uh, behavior that is autonomic, so automatic, without knowing that we're doing it. 
And this is a defense mechanism or a control mechanism that keeps us away from being the radiant being on a sexual level that we can be. And what mm. it needs and what that is what we literally do in the training, and this is what I've done with myself and with many, many people over the years when I've been working with them, that when you let somebody else in this contracted holding, holding control mechanism, that it needs an extra level of connection, it needs an extra level of communication and an extra level of opening to slowly and gentle and you can do that with yourself without opening your finger, just slowly and gentle, kind of opening one finger after another. And this needs to happen consciously, slowly, and with a lot of awareness. Because if somebody else is touching you and you have a contracted, controlled, defensive mechanism, and somebody is not capable of really feeling you where you are, probably all this conditioning that you carry through your life will get re-triggered in a not-so-comfortable way. And then slowly relax your hands again. Let's check it all off so that you don't hold anything. Nice. Okay, so um, I want to I want to say something to that as well. Yes. I mean, so when it comes to sexual pattern and when we have intercourse, for example, and also masturbate, you know, we are among many are trained to clench. Yeah. So also women, you know, many women believe that they are supposed to be tight, and when they make love, they are supposed to tighten up the yoni. Yeah. But then you you actually armor. You create the armor, you become tense. So what you want to do is to relax while you have intercourse. You bring in relaxation and, and, and sensitivity instead. Yes, you're going to do the opposite. I invite you to do that next time. And also if you're a man hearing this and you make love with your, with your beloved, ask her to relax and slightly push out her yoni. So instead of doing this, like, ah, Ah, it's an opening instead. Yeah. So we want it all the time, or for me at least, like work with relaxation and softening and smoothening and opening the body. Yeah. A strong muscle is a relaxed muscle, not a tight muscle. Yeah. Yes. Bones. So I would like to invite everybody who has been in the training to use that opportunity to do a camera dearmoring, opening up your microphone. And maybe any questions? A, um, one second, we go oh, okay. there in, in a yeah. minute. So, so just speak a few words if you want to. Uh, what was your experience about sexual dearmoring, and uh, how does it has um, impacted or enriched your life? If it has, please feel free uh, to unmute yourself. We're not picking it. You unmute yourself. First person speaks first. We can see. You. Oh, the armory. <laughs> Yay. It's still going on. It never changes. It never ends. If your heart is beating fast, it's your turn. You can do is there it. actually one of you who want to do it? Raise the hands. We can see. Otherwise, we're going to leave it. Nobody wants to speak. No one to do it. Oh, Should we, pick we can it? write something in the. Uh, we Steph, can write something Steph, in the chat. Steffi, no, let be. Your hand up, Steffi. Please feel free. Unmute yourself and be you. Steffi is trying, but there's something going on. I'm gonna ask to unmute and see if that helps. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. No, yeah, yeah. Cool. Whee. Okay, okay. Um, it's a long story. I'm trying hard to make it short. So the armor I had is one that my mother put into my system when I was very young. And it was, and she said that literally, um, when I was little, being like a grown up woman is being a whore and uh, looking beautiful and attractive. 
will lead to me getting raped. So <laughs> that's a big armor. And that led to my sexuality being completely <laughs> well, fucked up. Hmm. And it led to me gaining a lot of weight during puberty because uh, apparently I wasn't allowed to be beautiful and attractive. So my unconscious decided to gain weight. And I had been struggling with that weight for all of my life, um, obsessively, like uh, thoughts about what do I eat, when do I eat, how much do I eat, it took such an amount of energy. And um, there were, I was doing sports to a max, uh, obsessively too. And um, well, I never lost the weight because um, because my unconscious was just much stronger and the limiting beliefs were much stronger. And during the, the armoring training, I had three sessions that made a difference. It was the Yoni de armoring. It was a private de-armoring session I took with Heine, the lead assistant. And it was another freestyle session that I had with one of the participant, other participants. And um, it finally, I hadn't even hoped for that. It finally actually freed me of those life, long life, old, I'm wow. 53 now, um, limiting beliefs. And I, and that was in April, the training. And since then, I'm able to lose weight. Wow. It's, wow. I, I don't do binge eating anymore. I don't have to obsess anymore. I can just limit what I eat and it's easy. Wow. And um, I, I, you I look sort different. of always, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, the camera angle is not very, <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I'm more than happy wow. and convinced and passionate about this whole de-armoring as a lifestyle. Mm. Thank you. Wow, thank Sorry. you. I'm so happy thank for you. you. Yeah. Thank you so much wow. for sharing that. Thank Amazing. <laughs> and there was a I'm hand up myself. from... Thank you. There was a hand up from Samantha. Mm. Um, uh, you're ready to... If anybody have a question, please write. I just want to say there's actually two other participants. One got uh, rid of a uh, fear of flights, like of flying after the training. Yeah, which is amazing. Fabienne, she's also here. And and another one who who has eyesight got better. Like he didn't need his glasses. I mean, that's yeah. just that's stuff we haven't actually heard before. So that was yeah. really incredible. Yeah, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> so Samantha if you still want to speak you raised your hand now it's the time um, if you don't oh no I see you unmuted please hi I am new to this world and I have a question is please. now a good time okay it's the time I've yes <laughs> I actually got the time for the webinar wrong and so I just joined when you suggested we close our fist and slowly open each finger mm -hmm. i am processing some uh, beginning experiences of sexuality that unfortunately happened in childhood way 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 too early mm. um but when i try to open my finger i ca i can't um and so I'm curious, um, how would you suggest to be in relationship with contraction if it's not ready, uh, if, if, if that's what is? A very metaphorical question. Come to the Sana, training. I, yeah, I can. Huh? Sana, Sana, you're on the jump of speaking. Please. Okay. So, so first I want to... Um, uh, assure you that nobody can open the fist <laughs> it's it's a part like it's a part of the exercise it would take a really long time uh, for it to open up like it would feel cramped and tight and that's kind of the the practice to understand when we micro clench and when we are tight yeah so that's one part but then i want to ask you um wait then i lost the, the question 
So, so can you repeat your question? What would it take for you to open on a relational level? Did you say that? I am saying that, but I also want to acknowledge where I am without force. And so yeah. my, um, what I'm asking is, how would you suggest to be with contraction? Because yes, that's what right. it is. That's what, yeah. So how would you, how do you feel? You know, so, so this is the thing Like there, we don't want to force that contraction. It all depends on, you know, when we go into the armoring, it's, we have to look at the specific individual's background, the story, the history, the ego pattern, the structure, there are many different layers. To me, when I hear you, it sounds like it, it requires gentleness and care. And there might even be a level of fear underneath that in you that uh, maybe you're afraid of being, uh, you know, hurt again or overstep your boundaries again. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Re yeah. Rebuilding trust. Yeah. So then it's really important that you go slow and it's really important that you do that in, in, uh, in settings where people are gentle and caring uh, and can see that and hold that. Yeah. It's very important because otherwise we can re-traumatize and go into more contraction. So no, no need to force that like being gentle yeah and find settings where you can practice consent work is crucial and gentle touch and and safe practitioners that it can help you to empower you so you find your your boundaries you can start to define yourself and you start to trust yourself more yeah and then that knot will slowly open yeah and how I'm does very... that feel i feel um I feel a willingness to be with the pain of the contraction mm. and I feel a sense of gratitude and hope for um, the way that you, the way that you shared what you did. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, thank you for saying that. So there is, um, we cannot go into a deeper coaching session here because of the webinar. So I just want to say that just just trust that and step by step and it will unfold yeah just trust the process and 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 keep seeking and keep asking yeah and and do come to the training really this is why the training is designed there are 11 days that you can receive so much the armoring that will actually help the muscles to relax really this is this is really the key yeah and and one really important piece that we all three emphasize is never use any force any pushing and any overpowering dynamics, specifically in this case that you have described. So that means uh, that when you are receiving a dearmoring session, and it goes as well with uh, Tina Anderson asked that question, um, uh, uh, who is not experienced in sexual dearmoring, can you de uh, describe the sexual dearmoring session, what it is and what happens and so on. An important piece is that when it comes to sexual empowerment, specifically in the training, what you will learn is to take full ownership about your body and that you learn uh, that on one level of your body, you need somebody to help you to opening up different body parts. Yeah, So you can only de-armor yourself to a certain degree. And when it comes to de-armoring and you have another person working with you or on you, that you having this level of trust, safety, and connection that allows you to let somebody come in proximity to your body and to your genitals, that you can literally um, uh, surrender to your own experience while somebody does what you want them to do. And that's not always pleasant. It can be uh, a, a trigger certain emotional responses in your body stored and this is literally part of the dearmoring process to let that go in a self enough environment where you can literally trust and find deeper layers of yourself i mean there Thank is another you, there is another aspect to it which is by allowing someone else to actually do that for you it's also creating a bridge of trust if the trust was lost in the original instance or instances actually you have to be in order to bridge it you have to be with someone and the mm. safest well not the safest but one of the very safe places is within a session so that's kind of 
those places, spaces are designed to take people by the hand and cross the bridge back into safety, back into trust, back into being okay, being you with someone else, not mm. just on your own in your cave, kind of hidden. Mm. You see what I mean? So there's different layers to the answer. Yeah. Thank you, Samantha. I hope that resonates. Please feel free to reach out if you have questions. Yeah. Mm. So uh, yeah. we're open for questions. We're almost like an hour in. So I think we need to allow people to ask questions. Absolutely. See what other topics are to cover. And questions could be anything. Question could be, what is the training like? Um, how can I uh, become People might a even know, know, don't know they have a training. We have yeah, a training. So, yeah, but, uh, right. Uh, is it possible to go to a de-armoring practitioner when I have no experiences? Um, does everybody has the armoring uh, or armor problems uh, to let go of? So whatever your question is, everything is welcome. So there are no wrong or bad questions. And um, please feel free either to write it down or to unmute yourself if you're taking the shortcut. And also related to the topic. Of Let course. me just, um, just one quick answer to Frida. Uh, can it, one second. Uh, can you describe those 11 days? Please uh, reach out to one of us. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Reach, uh, reach actually to, to everybody here. Like we only have like X amount of minutes left. But uh, if you want deeper knowledge information about the training, please reach out. Matt is going to send uh, a, a link for the personal connection to three of us. We can here uh, is. A free Zoom, like 20 minutes uh, interaction call with any of you anytime. So just reach out and let's have a decent conversation to actually answer all the questions. I think that's what to say. I, I think it's useful to mention a little bit about the training if more people, instead of doing it one on one, I mean, everybody are welcome to reach out. That's not the point. I'm just saying to if you want to briefly, like in two minutes, just like, what are we actually doing? Uh, I can just mention that um, because many come to the training and they think that the armoring is pressing point one to three. Yeah, this is what I'm going to learn. And often what we hear in the end of the circle is like, wow, you know, I thought I would come here and and learn a set of points, but this is really so much more, yeah? So what we always do in the beginning is to make sure to set a safe space. We do a lot of consent work and we get to know each other. And then from there on, we get you get new pieces every day that will drill you to become a, a safe uh, and solid practitioner and human being, you know, because the armoring is life mastery, like we said. Like if we are, if we want to work with people, it's required to do the deep work. So the training is very much designed 50-50, like practice work and then personal work, yeah? Because they're anyway merged, yeah? Like this whole training is really a, an offering from our life experiences. So it's a blend of, of practical technique and tools and then a lot of processing and self-discovery. And this is goes on. So it's a full schedule from <laughs> eight to nine to 10, you know, eight in the morning to 10 in the evening, every day is breath work and theory and trauma release. And God knows what you learn so much. Yeah. Dean, That's a micro wanna, version. Yeah. Dean, do you want to add anything to what the training is or no, you're typing and then I'll jump in. So the, the, the armoring training in itself, it's in an amazing place outside of Sweden. It's a 11 day training, including food and accommodation. Um, and it is for individuals, for people who want to do the armoring in their relationship with their partner and for professionals of all kinds. So for therapists, body worker, facilitator, uh, um, massage therapist or people who just want to become a professional de-armoring practitioner. So, so this is literally a training for professionals, but not limited to it. So everybody who wants to do their individual work is more than welcome as well. And, and before we let people into the training, um, we have a check-in call with everybody so that we make sure that this training is what you're looking for and that we're having the right people together so we just want to make sure that um uh we are with the right audience together and uh the end do you have anything you want to add here um i was just reading it uh kind of people are um, asking where was it somebody was asking um how to be ready to let stranger enter the fingers inside you and all those kind of questions that's super amazing questions but what you need to understand that uh 
at least in the armoring style that we do it. Actually, the very reason we started the school in the first place was to create safe and responsible practitioners of this style of working with people. Because what we found through experience, at least in Europe, prior to us starting the school, that there was quite a lot of people practicing the armoring, not creating safety and being super irresponsible. So there is a way to do it and there is a way not to do it. So mm. it's a lot to do with trust and really creating a space of bubble, like a, a, a container that you really trust your practitioner. So if you're interested to have a session with someone, uh, I suggest I'm talking about outside the training because inside the training is like super, super, super safe. But outside the training, get in touch with two or three or four different people that offer it. Um, have a one-to-one -one intake conversation and see how you vibe with them. See if you feel safe. See if the conversation flows in a way they think, yeah, I think I would trust that person. And then slowly, slowly. So it's a, it's a steady process of, yeah, allowing someone to actually enter your intimate bubble, not just the physical body, but mm. the whole emotional body, mental body. It's a lot to do with safety and responsibility. So I, I hope this answers mm. the question. I want to say one thing to that, yeah, because even also if you go to a practitioner, then then you, it's a stranger still. They just mm. know more what they're doing. But what is very what a key point to when we do this work and what we teach in the training is that before we enter, we always ask the question like, when you want me to enter, then I want you to tell me I want you to enter. So there are no surprises. It's full ownership from the receiver. The receiver can always say no. There's no pressure. And we, you know, it's not, it's only on day six, actually, that when we, we do women's, uh, we start with the women's internal sexual healing, for example. So we no, do a we start lot with of the men's first. Yeah, yeah, but on the, yeah, yeah, on day five okay. and then the, on day okay. six, it's the women. So, so it's, it's a really, um, it's a process to create safety in the groups. So everybody feels safe and then everybody are welcome to say no. That sometimes can be the most empowering thing that we need to say. So we have had people late in last training. We had a woman from Egypt, for example, uh, who Muslim. worked a uh, Muslim. Yeah. So she worked. Uh, yeah. And we had that before Dahlia, for example. Okay. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. So we had women before going through that. And this is also why it's so first, we of course have to deal with the individual, always individual first story, background, cultural, whatever, you know, comes with that particular package. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then see, are you ready? How ready are you? Um, where are you in your process of development? Uh, for sure, you know, my heart is really pounding because this is why I love this work because it's so important to turn this around because it's yeah. so fucking distorted in the world. It's, it's, it's just beyond distorted. It makes me pissed off, angry, passionate, like hungry to change. Oh. So the more <laughs> I love the pressure around. <laughs> So, so this is why I really, really encourage women like you uh, who show up, who, who feel called. This is like you, you're putting a mark. You're courageous. You're leading the way. You, you transformation a whole culture. Can you imagine how big it is? It's like I get chills. This is so courageous. It was the same with this last woman from Egypt. She did such a massive work. And we were like, wow, imagine the impact it has on the field. Somebody yeah. has to break the pattern yeah somebody has to do that and take that on so i just encourage 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 is the one of the most important works that we can do yeah just because of that as well and what so, I to add, yeah sorry. oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah good 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 and what i oh. want to add to it like sister you're so passionate and you're so careful you're so like come and be trained like you need to be mm. trained first you need to experience it yourself in many aspects this will take a few years this is not going to happen in 11 days like get really grounded training in how to deal with all these things. You might also want to go into psychology. You might want to go into communication. You might want to go into trauma therapy. You might want to go into all different kind of aspects of working with people before you're actually ready to approach the women in such circumstances. And hey, hey sister, you know, do you want to? Are you ready? Because there is a way. Mm -hmm. So high, higher recommendation, encouragement, please. Yeah, come totally. in, like, please. Explore, do not stop. Carry mm. on it. And also the other thing that I need to say on this topic is that not everybody is ready for this work, you know, this is super intimate. I mean, this is this is radical because yeah. armoring by the, the, the definition of the armoring is you will change, you will become someone else, you will not stay the same. So if somebody is kind of stuck to be for whatever reason, it could be fear, it could be karma, it could be not enough inner impulse to actually change many different reasons, they're not actually ready 
to embark on their journey. Then there's nothing we can do with them. So there's also a big, large part of it is like only fraction of people are actually ready for this work because it requires you to sometimes leave your family, sometimes divorce, sometimes leave the country, sometimes live on a different continent. Definitely break cultural change patterns. Yeah. Break, uh, uh, change personal friends nonstop, like seriously. Like this is for everybody, not just for people that you kind of talk about. Mm. So the armoring actually requires willingness to shift your life. Mm. And if people have that inner willingness, then this is work for them. But unfortunately yet for most it's not see can you see the importance of instead can you see the importance of breaking that can you okay. see the importance you know like 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 choose to like for me like I, I i i did it multiple times i'm like i'm not bringing forward like abuse in my lineage i'm like i'm not putting yeah. a child onto this world until i heal this this like this is my determination this is what i'm dedicated to i take on the that low to shift things I choose that. And I think this is like, if you could take that on, that is, that is massive. Do that part that you can do. Mm. And, and I, and you know, and if you want, I'm happy to have a call with you and, and explore mm. this a little more. Yeah, I'd appreciate please, that. Yeah. Please. It feels terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> what you're talking about feels, but it's simultaneously amazing and utterly terrifying on a, yeah. like non-cognitive, you know, take all the books out off the shelf. No, this just is yeah. not cognitive. <laughs> no. I would like, to, I would like to add as well something, you know, in the last training, we had such a variety of people from different cultures uh, and that has enriched the place in so many ways. So we had, we had a woman from Iran, a woman from Egypt, and we had two men um, born in Iran with, with, with cultural backgrounds of, of, um, their religion uh so we had people from from canada and you know it's just like people come literally from all over the world uh and the the variety of cultural um clashes is massive in that field we ha we had somebody who was admitting in the field that he has conducted a rape situation where every woman who had just even the tiniest little experience of sexual misconduct uh coming with a story up and that has the opportunity and the possibility to heal in the space so yeah. so that we don't collective put it, work we don't put it under the carpet you know stuff will pop up automatically and i think the three of us are kind of equipped enough to deal with all these different clashes through the years yeah. of experience that we have yeah. We're not and afraid. we created <laughs> We're creating that space <laughs> that exactly this can show up and heal in this place. And then, yeah. of course, you know, you cannot heal the entire in, in, entire culture of a society. No. And you need to make that as careful as possible. You need to create your environment. And this is what we offer with the de uh, uh, Art School is that we have a community of people who can connect with each other and practice with each other, where people can connect and communicate their difficulties. And uh, and you can come back and assist at the training afterwards. You have attended. You know, there's so many ways of really implementing and create your own community where you live. So, mm -hmm. so there are so many different um, uh, uh, ways of really implementing that in your life. And um, wait, wait, wait! I just <laughs> like as you were talking, I really want to getting fired up a little bit. No, 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 no! Just uh, talk a little bit about the intensity and the structure of the training that we didn't actually touch upon. Can I say oh. one last thing uh, just to wrap this How up? Panketa, thank you so much for sharing. Like, and this is why why I love this work and what we do very much. It's and, and this is what I'm so passionate about to look at the bigger picture. This is collective transformation. This is collective healing work that we are shifting. Yeah. So this is this is really like we really bring up all the shadows, cultural, everything like backgrounds. It just comes up and this is how we transform it. Yeah, this is the only way not repress it, transform it. Yeah. Thanks so, for your responses. Yeah. So to go back to the training. So Matt, you touched on it. Thank you for that, for remembering, actually. And Conchetta, thank you for bringing the real life issue, because this training is real. Like we don't really play games. This is there is nothing theoretical in our training. I mean, there is theory. But it's not a theoretical training. Don't if you do come to our training, this is highly experiential, highly intimate, very personal, and very direct and very, very real. It's raw. We really ask because you see the thing is it's a beginning of the training for the armory practitioners. And in order, in order for you to hold space for the armory, you really need to catalyze yourself. Like you need to open yourself up left, right, and center, go to the core of your issues. Otherwise, you're gonna be a shallow space holder. You see, this is this is the thing. Mm. And because of that, 
when you actually sit in a circle with us, we are highly trained decades of experience in bringing the reality out, bringing the authenticity every single time. Are you authentic? Are you real? Or are you masking? Are you playing? Are you like slimy little, like come out real? Like, so this is, this is actually why this training is so amazing. It's because it gives people opportunity and safe space to really go boof with the demons out. So that we can actually heal them, transform them, transmute them one at a time, like for real. So thank you for opening this uh, this topic mm, because potent. it's important to mention, you know. Yeah, very potent. Brings it into the yeah. to the depth. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sana, I have I I have, a, I have a request to you, Sana. I mean, we have, so I've done six training in amazing places over the last uh, uh, three four uh -huh. years, and. Um, but there were six, no, 70 training before in amazing places in the world. And Sana <laughs> found a place, if you believe it or not, is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Are you willing to share a few words about that while I'm dropping the link of the de-armoring training again and it's again the link about the, um, the discovery course. call that you can do yeah. as yeah. well with the price and that we have a webinar special today um, yeah. that you can um, uh, save 10% of the original price if you just uh, place a deposit within the next 24 hours i drop that right now please copy and paste that somewhere sana are you willing to share about this amazing place where we are oh home? yeah so um mm, we're gonna be in a i love uh, comfort and <laughs> beautiful places yeah luxury so, luxury lux yeah luxury <laughs> kind of Kind of. So I found this uh, beautiful, it's actually in a mansion. We're going to be in a mansion and uh, with a big workshop hall, amazing sound system. And all the rooms are en suite, which is rare in this type of training. So everybody had their own toilet and shower and comfortable bed. It's this high class hest and senya, I don't know, a horse's bed or the horse bed, or I don't know what to say in English. <laughs> but everything is is uh, is uh, comfortable and and great, basically. So it's an opportunity for basically everyone to have a single room if they want. There are no dorm situations. Uh, so if you're one of those who enjoy that as well, to feel that that is supportive, then this is really a place to experience. Yeah. There is a question from Heidi Brandt. I will, um, yeah, but Diane is answering that. You know, an, an, an interesting thing is about uh, armor as a defense mechanism, as a protective shield, is that we very much acknowledge and um, welcome the uh, armor. Yeah, so armor is important. We need armor, and without armor, we would have not made it. So everybody who has armor is a resourceful being, and it's a yeah. very intelligent mechanism of the nervous system, the emotional body, to create that armor. And um, and we don't want to take people's armor away. We want to give people the opportunity to loosening up and softening up that they have the choice to let go of their armor when they don't need it because they are aware of it. And bringing awareness to it is one of the first steps. And transform it, yeah. yeah and then people choose how deep they yeah. are, are able to go by yeah. themselves. So we never force or push. And we, 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 we never rip somebody else's armor off ever. People choose because they're feeling safe enough. And also I want to add to that, that actually also depends a lot on the practitioner because some people mm. do not understand the depth of, the depth of subtleties of what they're actually dealing with. And I was one of those, I'm actually continually in training and they kind of go like, Bleh. well, that, that can rewound that, you know, that, that, that won't work. So it really depends who you're working with and on their depth, understanding, finesse and sensitivity and mm. depth of love to really understand where a person is coming from, to understand the trauma, to understand the defenses, to understand how to bring mm. them to the light. Mm. And this is where I was saying earlier, in order to become a diamond practitioner or a high skill, I need to hold a huge container of safety so that when defense shows up, I can actually surround my client within my field of safety and they can relax. So I hold them, I hold the inner child, I mm. hold the trauma and the drama, I hold the, everything that are in, within my container so they can really, as confused, fucked up and helpless they feel, they can actually just go within the container. Mm. 
but they would not be able to do that if I wasn't able to hold it. Mm -hmm. So really a lot of it depends on who is your therapist and how it's done rather than mm -hmm. what is done. Mm -hmm. I can I can add to that. So so and a lot of the deep trauma would never even release with force. It needs, yeah. you know, it, it's it's very clever. It will hide very, very deep. Yeah. Some armor can be released with force and some people might need that sometimes because they are so shut down and blocked but the really really deep part would never 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 show up with the force like this is this is why it's so crucial because we can really hurt people if we are mm. not careful there so so if you go out there now and look for the armoring practitioner ask if they practice soft touch the armoring for example yeah, yeah? Or reach out to us and we can we can suggest one of our um, students or assistants yeah, that we know are safe yeah <clears throat> uh, a, I think it's time thought, to also second, wrap up. Some therapist in our last training, uh, and he actually he yeah, two gestalt therapists. Yeah, yeah. because uh, he we we use a lot of similar techniques. They're not techniques, but uh, dynamic, modalities. Yeah, dynamics that you use in gestalt, and so you might find it inspirational uh, because it's this how, not what, but how is done that really like your eyes are just like, ah, okay, I can do this and I can do that. For him was also like, oh, I didn't know I can actually like, oh, no, no, we don't do that, but actually just try it and see. So you might actually find that uh, you find it useful as well. Okay, so um, I just uh, want to take timekeeping um, and uh, we are a little bit over apologies. We said we just go for quarter past eight. So we have a few more minutes to go. Uh, Sana and the end, a few last uh, final words to wrap it up from your side. Few last words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we just need to uh, invite people to come and join the training, really. Like, come and play with us. You're going to love it. So, we prepared this offer for like everybody who is here in this webinar. Uh, you get a discount for 24 hours. Please talk to us if you need to talk to us as soon as you want. We always have time and we love kind of chatting to new people. So this is my last word. Just come and play with us. That's it. I love you and goodbye for now. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for me, yeah, con conchetta is the right. Conchetta, yeah? Yeah. You really, uh, you know, lit my fire here because I'm really, that's my passion and dedication is to really transform on a, on a, on a, on the eagle perspective, on the collective level. Yeah, this is what I'm like. It really gets me going. So if you're really one of those who want to be a part of moving humanity forward, then come, you know, this will move yeah. humanity. Yeah. This is yeah. moving humanity forward. You will do that work. So if you feel dedicated to transform yourself and contribute to more global change, for more collective change, then, then, then this is for you. Yeah. And anyway, go, go do the work. Yeah. <laughs> move humanity forward. It's needed. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and you know my last words is you know I'm into the armoring since 2010 and what I have seen back then was horrifying what was around the field and what I have seen how the armoring has been developing and has been evolved and all the different components that uh, are added to that specifically in this training is absolutely mind-blowing fantastic so i have been coming back all the way after years and i can't recommend it enough to people because the armoring is kind of a lifelong process yeah. and uh, we're just getting more subtle and uh, as Diane and sana already said uh, you're wholeheartedly invited to join and if you have been in the training already there's always a uh, possibility to repeat or to Absolutely. come as an assistant and uh, what is a complete a different level of the armoring so mm -hmm. you're all highly invited please reach out um, if you have any questions to me Sana or the end Sana, uh, Sana will have the last <laughs> word and with that one we finish the webinar yeah I, I also also want to thank all of you that came here tonight and mm -hmm. uh, spent your time with us spent the evening with us and I hope it was valuable and brought some inspiration uh, yeah, and value to your life. And like Matt said, if you have any questions or yeah, if you have any questions, please reach out. Yeah. So it's thank great you. to see those that did the training with us. Great to see you again. It's like a little reunion yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Ciao, ciao. Love, love yourself. The first yeah. level of the armoring. <laughs>